In Earth's recent history, there's a fascinating story about enormous creatures that once roamed our planet. These massive animals, called megafauna, ruled the ancient world. But their story is one of both wonder and tragedy. Their reign came to a sudden and puzzling end. Welcome to Anthromedia. In this video, we will understand megafauna extinction and the thesis that ancient humans played a significant role in it. About 35,000 years ago, the world experienced a series of abrupt changes. The climate was becoming warmer, ice sheets melted, and sea level was rising. At the same time, modern humans were reaching new environments and using advanced tools for survival. Humans and megafauna coexisted for thousands of years. Hunting these massive creatures was a matter of survival. Cave paintings and ancient artifacts reveal our complex relationship with these animals. Megafauna, the giants of the prehistoric world, existed on Earth for millions of years. These include huge marine creatures, massive land dinosaurs, and today's blue whales. They have played crucial roles in shaping ecosystems as engineers, predators, herbivores, competitors, and mutualistic partners. Megafauna has faced extinction in the past due to various factors like climate change, volcanic eruptions, asteroid impacts, and changes in the atmosphere. However, in more recent times, particularly during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene, the extinction of many megafauna species has been linked to the direct or indirect influence of modern humans. The early human expansion across the world often coincides with the disappearance of these large animals. By the time human colonization reached even remote islands, numerous species of mammals, birds, and tortoises had gone extinct. The loss of megafauna had significant consequences for ecosystems. These large animals interacted with many other species, including plants, parasites, predators, and prey. Their absence created a cascade effect, impacting the web of life in various ways. The extinction of megafauna not only led to the loss of those animals, but also affected species that relied on them. This phenomenon is called co-extinction. It particularly affected organisms with close, specialized relationships with megafauna, such as parasites and mutualistic partners. Recent research looked at the extinction of large mammal species that weighed at least 10 kilograms over a period from 132,000 to 1,000 years ago. They found evidence of 177 such species that went extinct globally or on continents during this time. Africa had 18 extinctions, Asia 38, Australia 26, Europe 19, North America 43, and South America 62. The study also identified regions where these extinctions were most common. Texas had the highest number of extinctions, about 33 species, and Uruguay had the highest proportion of extinction, about 78%. Certain areas like southern South America, southeast North America, western Europe, and southern Australia were identified as extinction hotspots, while sub-Saharan Africa and southern Asia that had fewer extinctions are considered cold spots. The late Quaternary period, which began around 129,000 years ago and extends to the present, saw a significant extinction of megafauna across much of the world. Earlier in the Pleistocene, at the beginning of the Quaternary period from about 2.6 million years ago, both small and large species went extinct and many were replaced by new or immigrating species. However, during the late Quaternary, most extinctions affected large mammals, along with some big birds and reptiles, while marine animals were mostly unaffected. In the 19th century, scientists like Alfred Russell Wallace and Charles Darwin recognized this large-scale extinction. Wallace famously noted that we now live in a zoologically impoverished world 
as many of Earth's largest and most fascinating creatures have disappeared. Today, there's renewed interest in this topic due to concerns about current extinctions and the future of ecosystems. Some experts argue that we are currently witnessing the beginning of a sixth extinction where many species are at risk of dying out. Scientists have made great progress in studying extinctions by using a method called radiocarbon dating. This helps them find out how old fossils, like bones and teeth, are. Knowing the age of these fossils is important for understanding when and where different species disappeared. Other methods like ancient DNA analysis are employed to understand the loss of genetic diversity, which can cause extinction. However, some species, like the musk ox, have survived despite facing similar problems. One of the big mysteries in the study of megafaunal extinctions is why some regions, like North and South America and Australasia, were hit harder than others, like Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia, where large animals like elephants and rhinos still survive, though they are now endangered. Understanding the reasons behind these regional differences is a key challenge for scientists studying this period of extinction. Factors like climate change, habitat loss, and human hunting are all believed to have played roles in these extinctions. Let's understand the pattern of extinction in different regions one by one. During the last glacial period, Particularly around the last glacial maximum between 21 and 17,000 years, a large ice sheet covered much of northwestern Eurasia and extensive glaciers formed in the Alps and other mountain ranges. The vegetation in regions that are now tundra or forest was herb-dominated steppe tundra, also known as the mammoth steppe forests, survived only in southern areas. Although the impact of megafaunal extinctions in northern Eurasia has been downplayed compared to regions like North America, the losses were still significant. In areas with good data such as Europe, Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, northern China, and Japan, approximately 18 out of 49 large mammal species, about 37%, went extinct. These included some of the largest animals such as three species of elephants and two species of rhinoceroses, all of which weighed over 500 kg. The extinction events in northern Eurasia can be grouped into four phases. The first wave occurred about 40,000 years ago, but these events are less understood due to limited radiocarbon data. The second wave happened around the start of the last glacial maximum, the third during the late glacial and early Holocene, and the fourth in the late Holocene. Each phase saw the disappearance of different species over time. During the early last glacial period, several large animals like the hippopotamus and straight-tusked elephant disappeared from Europe as the climate cooled. Hippos, which once ranged as far north as Britain, retreated south and vanished from the mainland, though they survived longer on Mediterranean islands and in parts of North Africa. The straight-tusked elephant was common in Europe during a warmer period, but may have survived in Iberia until about 50,000 years ago, with some evidence suggesting it lasted even longer in northwestern Europe, although this data needs further confirmation. Similarly, the narrow-nosed rhinoceros, once widespread in Europe, may have survived until about 45,000 years ago in southern regions. Around the start of the last glacial maximum, between 30,000 and 27,000 years ago, several large species went extinct. The cave bear, or Ursus boleus, who was mostly a vegetarian, disappeared around 27,500 years ago. Its extinction is thought to be linked to colder temperatures and the declining quality of vegetation. In contrast, the brown bear survived, probably because of its more flexible diet that included both plants and meat. Genetic studies show that cave bears were divided into different species across Europe and Asia, with some regions overlapping. The spotted hyena, or Krakuta krakuta, also vanished from northern Eurasia, 
around this time due to colder temperatures and fewer prey animals. Other large animals like the cave lion or panther espalea and giant deer or Megaloceros giganteus moved eastward as the ice expanded over Europe but survived for a while longer. In Japan, the Nauman's elephant or Paleoloxodon namani went extinct around 28,000 years ago. There is also some evidence that a saber-toothed cat or Homotherium latidens survived in the North Sea area until about 32,000 years ago, though this needs further verification. The Neanderthals or Homo neanderthalensis also disappeared around this time. The most recent studies suggest they were gone from Europe around 41,000 to 39,000 years ago, although modern humans and Neanderthals coexisted for several millennia, allowing some interbreeding. Neanderthals likely faced competition from modern humans and worsening climate conditions, which contributed to their extinction. Meanwhile, a related group called the Denisovans lived in Siberia, but very little is known about their extinction timeline. From around 4,000 years ago to the present, several species in northern Eurasia have gone extinct, often due to changes in climate or human activity. For example, musk ox or ovibos moschatus, now found only in Arctic North America and Greenland, survived in northern Siberia until about 3,000 years ago. The European ass, or Equus hydrantinus, was once widespread across western Eurasia, but during the Holocene, its populations became fragmented and restricted to southern Europe and southwest Asia, with its last recorded sighting in the Caucasus about 3,000 years ago. Its extinction is believed to have been driven by the loss of open habitats due to climate change and overhunting by humans. The hydrantine ass is depicted in Paleolithic cave paintings and engravings from Lascaux Cave in France, as well as on Neolithic pottery from Anatolia. Remains found with cut marks in archaeological sites spanning from the Paleolithic to the youngest known remains of the species in the Iron Age across the species range, including Crimea, Italy. The Iberian Peninsula and Anatolia indicated that it was hunted by people including both modern humans and Neanderthals. In more recent history, species like the aurochs, the wild ancestor of domestic cattle, went extinct in 1627 in Poland due to hunting. Lions or panthera leo were gone from southeastern Europe around 2000 years ago, and they disappeared from the Middle East and North Africa in the past 200 years. Leopards or Panthera pardus were wiped out from southern and central Europe during the Holocene, but continue to survive in northern Eurasia, China and North Korea, as well as Africa and southern Asia. There are some species like the extinct camel or Camelus noblochi and the spiral-horned antelope or Spiros chiactensis that have limited data on when they disappeared, but it's thought they vanished during the late Quaternary. For other species, like the giant deer or Sinomegasuros yabe, which lived in China and Japan, the youngest record is around 44,600 years ago. The extinction patterns in northern Eurasia are staggered over thousands of years, unlike in North America, where most extinctions occurred rapidly during the late glacial period. In Eurasia, each species had its own complex pattern of range contraction and extinction, likely driven by environmental changes, rather than direct human activity. During the last glacial period, North America had a rich variety of large mammals, partly because of an event called the Great American Biotic Interchange. Around three million years ago, North and South America were connected by the Isthmus of Panama, allowing animals from both continents to migrate between them. This included South American animals like ground sloths and glyptodonts moving north and North American animals heading south. Additionally, North America had lower extinction rates earlier in the Pleistocene compared to Eurasia, leading to a more diverse megafauna by the late Quaternary. 
Additionally, North America had lower extinction rates earlier in the Pleistocene, compared to Eurasia, leading to a more diverse megafauna by the late Quaternary. However, during this period, around 69% of large mammals weighing over 45 kg went extinct, including all species of horses. Interestingly, although horses went extinct in North America, they were reintroduced by the Spanish in the 16th century and thrived as feral populations, such as the Mustangs. North America's climate and vegetation changes during the last glacial period were similar to northern Eurasia. However, the ice sheet in North America was much larger, covering most of the northern half of the continent. For many years, this ice sheet prevented animals and humans from moving between Alaska and the rest of the continent. But as the ice began to melt towards the end of the last glacial period, a corridor opened between the two main ice sheets, allowing animals and people to move between Alaska and what is now the contiguous United States. By analyzing pollen records, scientists have found that vegetation remained stable during the last glacial maximum between 21,000 and 17,000 years ago, but changed rapidly in the late glacial between 16,000 and 11,500 years ago, and early Holocene between 11,500 and 8,500 and 8,000 years ago. After that, there was little change until about 500 years ago. After 12,000 years ago, as the ice retreated, taiga forests spread across much of North America. Humans are thought to have first reached the Americas from Siberia, crossing into Alaska, around 14,000 years ago. They may have been unable to move further south until the ice corridor opened, but some experts believe people could have traveled along the Pacific coast in boats around 15,000 years ago. There is archaeological evidence of human presence in Alaska around 13,500 years ago. Further south, humans are known to have been present in the contiguous United States during the Clovis culture, which is famous for its distinct stone tools. This culture existed around 13,200 to 12,800 years ago, though some evidence suggests that humans may have arrived a few thousand years earlier. For example, at the Buttermilk Creek site in Texas, stone tools have been found dating back to 13,200 to 15,500 years ago, beneath Clovis-era layers. During the last glacial period, Alaska and the Yukon or eastern Beringia were separated from the rest of North America by ice sheets, making them a unique area with their own timeline of species extinctions. Scientists have gathered many radiocarbon dates from megafauna in this region, providing clear evidence of when certain species disappeared. For example, horses or equus species survived until about 14,600 years ago. Woolly mammoths lived until around 13,400 years ago. The cave lion survived until about 13,300 years ago. The Saiga antelope was present until about 14,500 years ago. Today, Saiga antelope are found only in parts of northern Eurasia. Interestingly, woolly mammoths also survived on islands like St. Paul in the Bering Sea until about 6,500 years ago, which is similar to how they survived on Rangel Island into the Holocene. Some other species, like the short-faced bear and the saber-toothed cat, disappeared much earlier, before the last glacial maximum. The short-faced bear vanished around 40,000 years ago, the saber-toothed cat around 24,700 years ago, and the wild ass about 35,700 years ago. These extinctions happened long before humans arrived in the area suggesting climate and environmental changes were likely the main causes. In addition, fossils of species like the Western Camel, Jefferson's Ground Sloth, the American Mastodon, and the giant beaver found in the Yukon likely date back to a warmer period called the Last Interglacial. During this time, 
the climate was warmer, allowing these species to extend their range further north. However, as the climate cooled again, they were probably driven out of the region. Now let's move to Canada, south of 60 degree latitude, contiguous United States and northern Mexico. During the late Pleistocene, around 35 large animal species went extinct in North America. There is direct evidence of human hunting for some species like the Colombian mammoth and mastodon, as their remains were found with Clovis spear points. Species that disappeared before the last glacial maximum 24,000 years ago included giant ground sloth and glyptodont. Others, like the American cheetah and saber tooth, vanished around 17,000 to 18,000 years ago. Most extinctions occurred between 11,500 and 15,000 years ago, including the American lion, short faced bear, mammoths, mastodons, horses, and more. However, older radiocarbon dates need updating for accuracy. The extinct giant tortoise was found as far north as Illinois during the warmer last interglacial period, but it likely vanished due to colder temperatures in the last glacial period. Other species that went extinct in late Pleistocene North America include several types of capybaras and a tapir, although they lack precise dating evidence. Additional studies, including dating of the short-faced bear show, that it coexisted with humans and was one of the last megafauna to die out around 12,700 to 12,800 years ago. Surviving large mammals in North America today include the polar bear, grizzly bear, mountain lion, elk, caribou, various deer species, and the American bison. While the bison nearly faced extinction in the 19th century due to hunting, conservation efforts have helped their numbers recover. None of these surviving species are currently listed as endangered. Now let's understand extinction process in South America. In the late Pleistocene, South America had a diverse range of animals, including many unique species that evolved when the continent was isolated. This period saw significant megafaunal extinctions, with estimates suggesting that about 80% of species became extinct. Notably, all horse species disappeared. Today, the largest native mammals in South America are Baird's tapir and the lowland tapir, weighing only about 350 and 250 kilograms, respectively. Unlike North America and Europe, South America wasn't extensively covered by glaciers during the Pleistocene, although there were glaciers in the Andes. The last glacial period may have led to a shift towards open grasslands, which favored grazing animals over tropical forests. A key question is why South America experienced major extinctions while Sub-Saharan Africa did not, despite similar climates and vegetation. One possibility is that most extinct megafauna were in southern South America, which extends further south than Africa. Research is ongoing, but currently there isn't enough reliable dating information to create a clear timeline of extinctions. Fortunately, many South American extinctions happened within the range of radiocarbon dating, making future research promising. Most archeological sites in South America date to about 13,000 years ago, or more recently, with the Monte Verde site in Chile being notable for dating to about 14,800 years ago. This site is recognized as one of the earliest known archaeological locations in the Americas. Based on the dates of extinction of various species, three groups have been created. Extinction before 18,000 years ago includes species like Homsina or giant armadillo, glyptodon, and haplomastodon. Extinction between 18,000 and 11,000 years ago includes Cuvieronius, Mylodon, Nuthrotherium, and Toxodon. Extinction between 11,500 and 8,000 years ago includes Smilodon, a saber-toothed cat, Megatherium, a giant ground sloth, and Deuticurus, a glyptodont. 
However, more research is needed to determine if this chronological pattern is accurate. Some species might have survived into the Holocene, which began around 11,700 years ago. The Australasian ecoregion provides an interesting perspective for understanding megafauna extinction. During the Pleistocene era, Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea were part of a larger landmass called Sahol, which was connected during periods of low sea levels. While much of the northern continents were covered by ice, Australia experienced limited glaciation but underwent significant climate changes, alternating between dry and wet periods. For instance, in Queensland at a site called Lynch's Crater, tropical rainforests thrived from about 130,000 to 78,000 years ago, but then changed to more drought-resistant plants like eucalypts and acacias between 46,000 and 11,000 years ago only to see the rainforests return during the Holocene. The first humans, ancestors of modern Australian Aboriginals, likely arrived via Southeast Asia between 62,000 and 43,000 years ago. Despite lower sea levels, they would have needed boats to cross the barriers created by water. Australia's mammalian fauna was dominated by marsupials along with a few egg-laying mammals like the platypus and some unique rodents and bats. The dingo, a dog-like animal, was introduced from Southeast Asia around 3,500 years ago. During the late Pleistocene, around 55 mammal species went extinct in Australia and New Guinea, including about 40 megafaunal species. The extinction event was significant, with about 91% of Australia's megafauna disappearing. One notable aspect of Australia's extinct mammals is that they were generally smaller than their counterparts on other continents. This might be due to limited food resources and the vast arid interior of the continent. The largest known mammal from this time was the giant wombat like Diprotodon, which could weigh up to two tons. Other large extinct species included various giant kangaroos and a marsupial lion known as Thylacolio. Extinctions also affected non-mammalian species. For instance, the giant flightless goose called Geniornis newtoni and the giant monitor lizard called Varanus priscus or Megalania are believed to have disappeared around the same time. Most experts believe that nearly all megafauna went extinct around 46,000 years ago, which is earlier than in other parts of the world. The reasons for these extinctions are debated, with overkilling by humans and climate being two main theories. In Australia, some important surviving species that are considered megafauna include red kangaroo weighing about 85 kg, Western Grey Kangaroo and Eastern Grey Kangaroo. These are smaller than the Red Kangaroo. Emu is a flightless bird that averages around 36 kg, but can weigh up to 50 kg. Southern cassowary can weigh as much as 58 kg, especially females. A significant reptilian survivor is the saltwater crocodile which weighs between 400 to 1,000 kg. This is the largest living reptile in the world and is a major predator of large land animals, both in water and on land. Unfortunately, several smaller marsupial species have recently gone extinct. One well-known case is the Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian government even paid hunters to kill these animals. The last wild Tasmanian tiger was shot in 1932, and the last one in captivity died in 1936. South and Southeast Asia is a diverse region, which includes the Indian subcontinent, Southern China, Southeast Asia, and the islands of Indonesia and the Philippines. While there are many records of large prehistoric animals from this area, it's often unclear when many species went extinct due to poor geological data. Some species that likely became extinct during the late Pleistocene in southern China 
include Stegodon orientalis, a large elephant-like creature, Paleoloxodon nematicus, another extinct elephant, Elyropoda biconi, a giant panda, Megatyrus augustus, a large tapir, and Ultima, a type of hyena. Some of these species have also been found in Vietnam and Java. Claims of other megafauna surviving into more recent times have been re-evaluated, and only the Bubalus mephistopheles, a short-horned water buffalo, is confirmed to have existed during the early to middle Holocene in various sites in China. There is still much debate and uncertainty about the causes of the extinctions that occurred during the late Quaternary period. The extinction of large animals during the late Quaternary period seems to be closely linked to where humans lived and how long they coexisted with these animals rather than just climate changes. This pattern is particularly noticeable when comparing South America to Sub-Saharan Africa. In South America, there were significant extinctions of large animals despite the climate not changing drastically. This contrasts with Sub-Saharan Africa where there were fewer extinctions despite similar climate changes. In South America, some fluctuations in humidity and habitat types might have played a role, but they don't seem to be more significant than in Africa. Additionally, many of the extinct species in South America were adaptable and could switch their diets based on the available food. In North America, even though climate and vegetation didn't change dramatically, there were significant extinctions, especially around 11,500 to 10,000 years ago, which coincided with the arrival of modern humans. Some experts are arguing that climate change alone couldn't have caused the extinction of large animals in Australia. They say there's no clear explanation of how increasing dryness or aridity could have led to the extinction of big animals without affecting smaller ones or making animals adapt to the changing conditions. They also mention that modern large herbivores can survive in dry and changeable climates because they have low energy and water needs, eat various foods, can live in different habitats, and can go without food for a while. In contrast, smaller animals might struggle more when resources become scarcer due to climate change. Overall, this suggests that human activities, such as hunting and habitat modification, played a crucial role in the extinction of these large animals, often more so than climate changes. Those who support climate change as a cause of extinction have to explain why available habitats wouldn't have expanded during Ice Age climates. They point out that as Australia became drier and sea levels dropped, more land became exposed along the coast, forming large plains. These changes should have actually benefited large animals, not caused their extinction. They also mentioned that there's no strong evidence that the habitats necessary for most big animals got smaller. One theory suggests that the disruption of habitats by early humans could explain extinctions, changes in vegetation, and shifts in climate in central Australia. Between 50,000 and 45,000 years ago, there was a sudden and permanent transformation of landscapes from tree and shrub savannas to the arid scrub we see today. They argue that the only other significant environmental change comparable to this happened when Europeans brought in grazing animals like cattle and rabbits. They also mention evidence of burnt emu eggshells, suggesting that humans interacted with extinct animals. In Northern Australia, they found that landscapes managed by indigenous people using fire looked different which might have made it harder for large animals to find food. The Holocene is a geological epoch that began around 11,700 years ago and continues to the present day. It's characterized by relatively stable climate conditions compared to earlier periods. Monsoons are seasonal winds that bring heavy rainfall during certain times of the year, crucial for agriculture and ecosystems in those regions. 
Initially, scientists thought that the Holocene monsoon failure might have been caused by reaching a specific limit or threshold related to water conditions. However, recent research proposes a different explanation. Researchers suggest that early human activities, particularly the systematic burning of vegetation, may have played a significant role. Early humans, possibly through the intentional use of fire, could have altered the landscape by changing the types and distribution of plants in dry and semi-arid areas. The extinction of large animals wasn't solely due to climate change. Extinctions around the world coincide with the arrival of humans, suggesting a human role. The debate has shifted from climate versus humans to how humans did it. They emphasize the studying how climate change, soil conditions, landscape fires, and other ecological factors interact with human activities is crucial. They also mention that hypotheses should be testable and that various scientific methods, including ecological and evolutionary theories, should be used to gain a better understanding of this prehistoric extinction event.